at this point, you know, you're working with Pac, uh, the Machiavelli album, you guys are working on that. Yes. What was it like recording the, uh, the video and the songs for Toss It Up? What? That was, I think that's my most, that's my most uh, favorable, favorite, that's my favorite video because, you know, I, I grew up singing with different groups in Chicago and the songs that I sung were songs by, you know, Jodeci. Now I'm standing alongside Casey and Jojo recording that song and then to have an opportunity to, to do, we did two different videos uh, to, to toss it up. But to be with some guys that I grew up listening to and that, you know, I respect them as singers. Nobody was hotter than Jodeci and Kate, Casey and Jojo at that time. So to be able to sing with them and Aaron Hall just put like the icing on the cake, like to be able to sing with those legends at that time at such a young age and to have the first verse and to be able to hang in there with those guys and not be scared, uh, it was incredible. How long was uh, this before Tupac was shot? That you shot the video? Oh, oh wow. Uh, well, that video had already been shot. Uh, wait a minute, let me see here. If I'm not mistaken, I'm sorry. That was the last video that he shot. That was the last video that he shot. We actually, uh, before coming to Las Vegas, we shot the video. We actually waited a long time for Pac to come to the set. And he showed up to the set. We did the video. And we immediately got on the road to come to Las Vegas uh, for the Mike Tyson fight. Oh, so like, as okay. soon as they said, all right, cut, da 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 we got a hundred and something deep cars driving driving through the desert to get to to las vegas is there any untold stories that haven't been out there about tupac i think there are and i, I think this is a great time to tell everybody to go get that stranded on death row book so that they can hear some more about that i'm giving y'all all the jewels but i you know I, I i've shared a lot of things you know on social media i've shared in a lot of videos i try to share my experiences because Pac is so respected um and there's so many great moments, it's kind of hard to remember everything. But uh, I, as far as untold, I think there's more un, unheard songs than the untold stories right. uh, when it comes to Tupac. Okay. Can, now, um, you guys are heading to Vegas. Yes. You guys are 100 deep. 100 and some deep cars. Can you take me through that weekend? So we on the way down, this, down to Vegas and uh, stopping and I think in Barstow, if I'm not mistaken, some young guys said something to, to one of the guys in a restaurant when we did a pit stop for gas. And these young guys was on a football team and they started talking shit and shook homies rolled their little ass up. <laughs> <laughs> like completely rolled them up. You seen little niggas in their jerseys going over there being thrown Back, back, back then. It was a bunch of dudes well, that they beat up? Well, it was a bunch of them. Every last one of them was getting tossed around in the parking lot, scraped up. And, okay. uh, you know, we, after that, we got back in the car and headed to Las Vegas. Didn't stop and, and, until we got here. Okay. And then you guys went to the Tyson fight. They and, went uh, to the Tyson I mean, fight. They went to the Tyson fight. Yeah. And you didn't, how come you didn't go? I had some cream pants on. And when I came out of valet, I was at the Luxor Hotel. The valet guy was like, Mr. Knight, you have some red stuff on the back of your pants. And I looked down and it was like splattered of red going up and down my leg from the bottom of my foot to the back of my calf. Mm. And it's like, I'm like, what the hell? So I called Suge on the phone and he like, well, I'm gonna leave your ticket. Da 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 da, catch, catch the limo up there, go get you some more clothes. And so I went to the mall, everything was there and I closed down. Uh, I went and found some pants. I found some to wear. And we, uh, when I got in the car to call Suge to tell him I'm on the way, he like, man, he done knocked this motherfucker out. Meet us at the club. We'll meet you at the club. Da 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 da. And I went to 662 when we were partying and it took longer than usual for Suge to come. And um, after a few minutes went by, one of the guys came in and said, you know, just like really, in a, you know, emotional, hysterical way, he said that, uh, Pac and Shug was killed on the strip. Wow. Yeah, so. Well, where are you going? What was going through your head when they came in and oh, said man, that? Like, I'm, I'm looking. I, I'm looking. I'm crying. I jumped in the truck. I didn't know which way to go. My security really wouldn't let me. 
kind of leave, you know, wouldn't let me go too far. So I attempted to kind of try to find where they were. Um, and after a little while, we found what hospital that they went to. Oh, and, they were uh, both in, at, all right, they at were the, both yeah. at the same. And everybody went to that hospital and just kind of like waited around, like, you know, we just waited around to kind of see what was going on. And after a few hours, several hours went by, should, if I'm not mistaken, several hours or the next day, should come walking out and he, he signed himself out of the hospital. Um, he was like in a daze, if I, if I could, you know, speak on that. He was more in a daze, like he wasn't, he wasn't should. I think he was kind of shocked or in shock. I believe so. What was that week like? Uh, you were there the whole week, right? I was there the whole week, very emotional because, um, uh, you know, you thought Pac was gonna live, you know what I mean? But all these death threats was coming. You know, people would call in and say that we gonna finish the job and da 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 So we parked the U-Haul like on the side of the window just in case they shot up the window because he couldn't be moved. He was on life support. And they had him on the first floor? On the first floor. And he was on life support. And, uh, you know, we would go in there every day, pray, and different people was coming to see him. And, uh, the last day that I had seen him, his mother and I and his aunt was in the room and a few more people. And uh, when I sang, I started, she said, sing something after we prayed, because I would always, we always just be in there singing and praying. She said, sing something. And I sang, uh, a change is gonna come. And tears kind of like rolled out his eyes into his ears. And really that's kind of, that was the last time I seen him. Mm, okay, okay. How did you, when, when did you hear that he passed? Uh, so that night, that morning, early that morning, I left because everybody kind of like took, took like a security position to kind of like walk around the hospital and make sure that everything was okay. I left early, I left maybe two, two three hours before he passed. Uh, I was sleeping in my hotel room and I, while I'm asleep, somebody just bamming on the door. I have the latch on the door and the security kind of like they broke in the room because that was a suite and I was sleeping on the other side. And uh, the homie Wack came in and he jumped on the bed and he just was hollering like, you know, he gone, he gone, he gone. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He gone. He's like, he gone. He just kept hollering and crying and he's gone. And I jumped up out of the bed. I had on some boxes and a t-shirt and some socks. And I jumped up out of the bed and um, uh, I just went to, my, went to the car and I drove to the hospital. And when I got to the, before I even turned the corner, I was, it was thousands of people like playing, you know, playing uh, All Eyes On Me record, and mm -hmm. playing all of his music and balloons and shirts and candles and, you know, it was men crying, you know what I mean? And I just, I, I jumped out of the truck without even stopping it. Like, it slowed down and I seen the door and I just jumped out and ran towards the door and the nurse that, um, that was, you know, taking care of Pop and, you know, talking to us and telling us how, about, you know, the situation. She just opened the door and she just hugged me and she was like, I'm so sorry. And um, my security just came in and grabbed me and like kind of covered me up. And, and we left off, I can't remember, I think we were down in the Fremont, <coughs> uh, Fremont area of uh, Las Vegas, the Fremont hotels, one of those hotels. It was like a real small, old school hotel where we just wanted to be low key. His mother wanted to be low key and we went there. Uh, oh, that night? That night to start talking about it. And, and, uh, mm. to kind of, Who all was there? Everybody was there. Everybody? Well, I should, shouldn't say everybody. The, uh, all of the outlaws and Tupac family, and some of the homies, death row homies, Shug's homies. Yeah. But not a lot of the artists. Well, what was that week like for Shug? Um, he didn't want to be around nobody, like, and that was kind of different where I wasn't able to get him on the phone or, or you know, talk to him. We had a house here in Vegas, even though we stayed at the hotels and stuff like that. Um, he didn't want nobody at the house. Like, he just wanted to be alone, you know. Uh, and I can remember a couple of times sitting with him in a penthouse in the Luxor and 
you know, we would sit all the time and write songs and he'd, he'd be like, I'm gonna write a song and you just sing it. I'm gonna say some stuff. And, you know, I, one thing I can remember him saying, you know, write us, we gonna write about having friends and, and those friends not being your real friends. And, da, 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 da. and as he's talking about not having real friends, he crying. Like he's crying and, and, and to have an opportunity to watch Shook and I cry, uh, smoking a cigar was, uh, you can imagine that was, that was emotional because I, I really never seen him so humble and really never seen him so weak. Yeah, that definitely, that doesn't sound like Suge, you know, or at least not what the public gets to see from Suge. You know, um, I like to always give the reel of what I've seen with Suge. Uh, I believe he's a God-fearing God man. I mean, to hear him pray, to hear him talk about the Bible is something that the world would probably never get an opportunity to see. But for me, uh, to know that it's in him, uh, I just think that he didn't have the right people around him uh, to, to send him in the right direction. Sometimes you can get things so fast. I mean, you know, you had hundreds of millions of dollars and a lot of power. And everybody don't deserve power and everybody can't handle power. And uh, I, I, think, I think that put him in a bad position, knowing the power that he had. And he had to live up to what everybody thought of him. He had to live up to those things. And that's what uh, have him where he is right now.